this moment in history is a moment where we must refuse to choose between Malcolm and Martin. Yeah. We must refuse to buy into the past false dichotomies of nonviolence versus revolution. In fact, what we must do is we must understand that at this moment, nothing short of revolutionary change is required, not just in Palestine, mm -hmm. but in here. And then, in fact, if we're going to look deeply at the politics of those men and the things they stood for, we're much closer to a united revolutionary perspective than anything else. Uh, I think, just to say another word or two about it, perhaps in the Palestinian case, one of the most disgusting things that's said and done, not just by the reactionaries, not just by the Zionists, and not even just by liberals, but by some in our own progressive circles, is the idea of, oh, oh, let's look for a Palestinian Gandhi. Let's look for a Palestinian Gandhi. This is disgusting. And I say this as a longtime member of the Warriors. This is international. Disgusting for many reasons, aside from the fact that it takes away the question of self-determination and Palestinian mm -hmm. rights and all of that disgustingness, it's also disgusting because often when people look around for this Palestinian Gandhi, they will find, oh, I don't know, Nelson Mandela. He's been sanitized. Yep. He is now a great, great leader that we can all embrace and support because he is, after all, dead. But the other thing he is, is someone who actually stayed in jail for all those years because he refused to give up the armed struggle. That's the real Nelson Mandela, the one that hasn't been whitewashed or mythologized beyond any conception. That's the Nelson Mandela we may want to actually learn something or other from. But it goes even beyond that disgustingness. Because, and now I've taken more than one minute on this one point, but the other two points are each going to be only one minute. Like, you only took five minutes. Anyway, the thing is, it's also disgusting because when you come down to what a lot of people, my own comrades and colleagues are saying sometimes, is that they want someone who is such an absolutist Gandhi, such an absolutist pacifist, so unwilling to engage in even throwing a rock. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Because they're throwing rocks at things that are like these huge, you know, multi-billion dollar uh, military machines. But no, 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 no. We're going to equalize it. These are terrorists throwing rocks, and these are terrorists. You know, we'll say, because we're good liberals or progressives, right. that they're terrorists on the other side as well. But we have to be careful that no one use violence because, you know, even Gandhi didn't believe in that. Okay. Even Gandhi himself talked and wrote quite a bit about better to throw rocks than to do nothing. So this idea of a Palestinian Gandhi isn't even about Gandhi. It's certainly not about any history of revolutionary movement that's come down the pike for the last 10, 20, 30, 50 years. It is our time to refuse to buy into the false dichotomies of past generations and to refuse to choose to pick one or the other and say, oh, okay, you have to be this or that. That's point one. <laughs>